Uh, we'll, be, we'll be starting in, in a minute. We'll be turning over to the Sabani here for starting of the session. Okay, uh, good morning, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, uh, to uh, our uh, policy media and uh, everybody. Uh, great to have you. Uh, okay, when the remind also that I'm talking about the best and uh, we're all happy here. Good morning, everybody. Um, actually, our policy media is also specific right now. We are called Spanish and Spanish. And time for because we need this uh, mix. Uh, mix. Right. Good morning, General. I'm John Evans, and for the morning, because I'm our guest and to our colleague Jacob Media. So, we would like to welcome everyone to the Posadin Press Conference uh, with regards to the uh, deadline you know, set by our uh, by uh, the Arbitral Tribunal regarding the case of Town Channel Development Corporation and uh, BCD. Okay, uh, probably uh, you got some open statements. Right. Uh, but uh, before we open, we'd like to ask of course our guests to uh, share their opening uh, messages. So, expect a little um, examination at that time. So, we have Marty Joseph, uh, the teacher. Good morning, yeah. don't, don't announce this. Good, good afternoon. I am attorney Joseph Jesus. Uh, along with me is attorney Daniel C. Darwin, and we are counsel for Capture and Game Development Corporation. I will refer the opening statement to the chairman of the board, Mr. Bob Sauter. Okay. Okay. So, again, we'd, we'd like to go straight to the point on the remaining two. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. So, well, good morning. Good morning, Papa. Good morning, Pa. And uh, we're, we'll, we, I guess, we know why we're all here. Uh, first of all, to start with uh, this press con, we've called this press con to basically discuss uh, the current situation where we are, and basically what happens over the next uh, several weeks moving forward. First of all, just to clarify, um, the deadline today, which uh, is on the 20th, uh, actually refers to a 30-day uh, deadline, which was given by the office of the sheriff, you know, uh, the ex-official. You know. And um, 30 days wherein both BCDA and CJ Depco should, on the part of BCDA, pay the 1.4 and Devco to vacate. So again, uh, the uh, sheriff basically gave a notice of 30 days for both parties. Okay. And the deadline, our deadline for Devco is today. Now, uh, first of all, what we just want to stress is that um, as far as all the court orders are concerned, and I think this is well documented by now and even known by everyone, the uh, action to vacate by DEPCO is reciprocal with uh, the obligation to pay by BCDA. So um, now if all happens perfectly, then hopefully today we get a check for 1.4 and we in turn will vacate. Now uh, again, to reiterate when we say vacate, what we really mean is we vacate the premises, which is under our control, the gates, the roads, the open spaces, the forest, all of that, okay? The offices that we occupy, the buildings that we control, that, that remain in our control, we vacate all of that. However, it is still our position that the third party locators, our investors, are all parties whose rights should be and must be honored by the BCDA because they are not a party to the arbitral uh, de uh, decision or proceeding and they are not even mentioned in the court order. There is no eviction notice and there has been much worse. There has never been any due process given to any single property owner in Camp Jam Hay. So yun ang pinaka-important sa amin no, is uh, we've also taken it 
as our fight. It's not just collecting the 1.4 billion, but fighting for the rights of all the third party locators, residents, investors in Camp John Hay. And we cannot stress the importance of this to Camp John Hay Devco because these are the people who trusted BCDA and Camp John Hay for 18 years through three or four presidents. And BCDA, John A. Devco jointly enticed everybody to invest in Camp John A, which they did. All 1,631 investors, locators, and residents. So it's uh, unimaginable that these parties in good faith who trusted both Devco, CJ Devco, and BCDA and government in this PPP project would just be dispossessed of their properties without due process. Okay, uh, we have people here who spent 40 million for their home. Can you imagine just taking it away just like that without due process? That is a basic fundamental constitutional right of every citizen in this country that you must have due process. And that is the most unthinkable thing for us is that they are being deprived of this by it being issued these uh, writs uh, to, to basically vacate, they have actually been deprived of their right for due process. And uh, never mind the good faith, that good faith part was, well, they had good faith. They believed in the government for the last three presidents. They believed in the BCDA who authorized us to do everything that we did. And uh, because of this belief and this trust, they are now being put in this situation. So uh, that is why we have taken the third party locators, the investors uh, under our wing and we're also fighting for their rights. We have, uh, I'd just like you to know, we have a lot of lawyers. Maybe our lawyers can just stand up to be recognized. And there are some of them here. There's, there's not even all of them. Okay, so let's give them a big round of applause. They're here to protect the third party locators, investors. Okay, we have about 12 of them, all in all. Uh, and uh, all of them are here. We're, they're showing uh, their full support to protect the rights of uh, the residents, third party locators, and investors. And they're here to be sure that these people are given their day in court and that their, their rights are respected. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, and that shows the commitment of DEPCO to all of its third party locators and investors. Um, so much so, that in a petition that we have filed, which has been forwarded actually to the Court of Appeals, we ask that the court make a determination that the third party rights be honored, be honored. And this matter is now in front of the Court of Appeals. Okay, that uh, the Court of Appeals must make a, a position and a decision a determination that the rights of these third parties are respected and as a result they cannot just be evicted without due process. Nowhere in the democratic world in, okay, do you have a situation where residents who have invested this kind of money as not only their vacation homes but their retirement homes, some of them as primary homes, some of them with their families, we have a lot of foreigners, they could have bought anywhere in the world. They chose Baguio, they chose Camp Janhe to invest and live and retire. Nowhere in the world would such people be harassed the way they have been harassed here and threatened to be dispossessed of their hard earned money, their retirement, their family homes without due process. Perhaps if we were in a communist country, that would probably be understandable, but we're not, I believe. At least we're not in a communist country, nor are we in a dictatorial com uh, country. But such actions, if you ask anyone in the free world, in the democratic world, are, are signs of some sort of a dictatorial type uh, action when you try to take somebody's home that he has paid for in good faith without due process. We cannot even evict a squatter the squatters have been given more rights. A squatter who has not paid for the land but has claims on it because by, by way of staying there is given more due process than these, these people who have invested in Camp Jamhe. That's, that's really something that's shocking. 
So anyway, because of this, I can't overemphasize the importance of this, not only to CJ Depo, but I think the entire country. Okay, because this, if this happens here, it can happen again anywhere. It can happen in Clark, it can happen in Subic, it can happen in Pora Point. In any area that the BCDA controls, it can happen in Fort Bonifacio. So I think this sort of abuse uh, must stop right here in Camp Jani, and that's what we're fighting for. So uh, in our motion, in our petition that is now pending in the CA, we have asked the court for a TRO, a temporary restraining order, an injunction, in fact, on two points. One, to protect the rights of our third party investors and give them due process. Two, to make a determination that BCDA must pay us and then we will pay. Again, that's a very basic fundamental thing. It doesn't need a lawyer to understand if I'm asking you to give up something, in this case, an entire camp, right? Then I must pay you first, or at least simultaneously, right? That's, that's basic. In any commercial transaction, if I want this bottle of water, I must pay for it. What more a big and large and complicated project like Camp, camp Janhe, which CJ Depco has invested five billion over to develop. Over five billion pesos have been invested in this project. We will vacate, but definitely, and at the very least, we must be paid. And we're agreeable to it. So these are the two items pending in front of the Court of Appeals. And since it will take time for the Court of Appeals to make that decision and determination, we have asked for an injunction or a TRO. And uh, at this point, I'd like to make this announcement that uh, we have, in fact, received the TRO. This is an advanced copy. If we have residents here, you can clap. <laughs> okay, we have it in our hands. So all our residents, 1,631 locators, investors, residents, members of the Camp John Hay community uh, can rest in peace uh, and uh, relax. Uh, we have a TRO from uh, the CA. This is an advanced copy. The uh, hard copy will, is on the way to be served to uh, the, the sheriff uh, in the court, in the courthouse. Uh, that should be with them within the next one or two hours. Uh, then it will be official. So, uh, members of the press, mauna pa kayo sa court. Okay, you're, you're hearing about this, seeing, about seeing this, knowing about it even before the court gets their copy. So, uh, but I think it's so important because I know that so many people have sleepless nights. So many people uh, have nightmares about losing their homes, their investments, their earnings, their hard-earned uh, retirement money. And imagine the threat of just taking it away overnight by tomorrow, Walana, right? So I just want to put everybody at ease that we have the TRO at hand uh, and in a matter of one or two hours, it will be served to the sheriff and that's that. The TRO uh, details, I would like to leave to our lawyer to explain uh, to the press. No? Please, Martin, attorney. So I confirm that uh, a temporary restraining order or TRO had been uh, secured from the Court of Appeals. Uh, as uh, Mr. Sobrepeña had mentioned, we had raised, uh, well, essentially two main issues in the petition filed in the Court of Appeals. Number one is the exclusion, or at least the respect of the third party rights, insofar as the execution and enforcement of the decision of the arbitral tribunal is concerned. These third party locators are not parties to the arbitration, they are not parties before the, court, the, the regional trial court. Therefore, in the enforcement of the decision, their rights must be respected. It's basic, it's due process. If I'm not part of this proceeding, I should not be prejudiced. Right? So second, it raises the second issue, which is basically um, the reciprocal obligations between and among BCDA and CJH Depo, such that the uh, obligation of CJH Depo to turn over possession of the camp to BCDA, respecting third party rights, must be done simultaneously with the payment of the 1.4. We have asked the Court of Appeals to, uh, to resolve uh, these uh, two Thank issues. What is important about this development is that in the meantime, as, uh, as may have been mentioned a while ago, 
uh, the notice to vacate issued by the sheriff uh, imposed a 30 uh, day deadline uh, from receipt thereof, which uh, since it was received on April 20, it would expire uh, by April 21. So the enforcement of the notice to vacate, and we understand that, uh, that there are third parties who have also been served with notices, you can rest assured that at least the enforcement of the rate of execution and the notices to vacate will not be, uh, or this cannot push through for the time being, uh, pursuant to the TRO issued by the Court of Appeals. Thank you. Um, Sir, would you like to share before we ask our police questions? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, as we focus more operations at Camp Janhe, everything is normal, business is as usual, the golf club is open, and so are the hotels and all other locations. So there's no problem on that. And uh, soon uh, after the court has received a copy of the TRO, we will all have to our own copies. And so uh, we can all, all residents and all rest, uh, relax, no worries, nothing is going to happen. Just to, just to clarify, uh, the, uh, the TRO was issued by the Court of Appeals in Manila. Okay. So the, uh, the copy, the official copy of the TRO is on its way. And it will be expected to be served upon the Sheriff and the, court of, uh, the Regional Trial Court of Baguio within the day. So uh, uh, what we have right now is a, basically a photograph of, uh, of uh, uh, the official copy of the TRO, which is uh, uh, on its way now. To buy this Where will we be able to have uh, some participation? Uh, we believe that, uh, without due respect to the uh, the regional trial, it might not be ethical for us to disseminate copies of the the TRO before the court actually gets it. No, uh, we do not see any impediment to us informing you of the issue once, but I think we must respect uh, the the Baguio regional trial court by giving it uh, a chance first to receive its copy before uh, copies are viewed. Actual copies are viewed by the media. So, in that regard, uh, I apologize. I, I do not think it would be proper for us to disseminate copies. Um, how many of you would want a copy of the TRO? Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll make copies now. We'll have start making copies now. Lima, tatlo? 20. Oh, the residents, in case you want copies too, <coughs> you can uh, ask for copies. We'll have. Uh, <coughs> Okay, uh, we will disseminate immediately after the court has received their official copy. So after the court has been served uh, by the uh, designated or appointed uh, deputy of the CA Court of Appeals, then we can release all the copies to everybody in this room. Okay, so um, I would want all of you for your copy, <coughs> contact Mr. Boise Iniguez. Boise, are you here? Yeah. So you're the man. You're the man. You're gonna give them the copies after after the it's served. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, na kita ng natin na partner Jonathan. So, ang favorite natin. Let's go with our um, our uh, middle colleague, Mamalu. Would you like to start? Then, unang tanong. Then break off from here. Miss Mamalu, here for our business mirror. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Understand that there is still a petition uh, pending now with RT six six. Is it the same? Which one? Which court? RT six six with uh, judges. Right? Okay. Is, is it is it essentially the same? Yes. Uh, petition is uh, forwarded to the CA. That is not the same. No. Uh, the uh, the uh, petition filed with the Court of Appeals is essentially in relation to the uh, the case pending before Branch 6. What Branch 6 did was to confirm, to issue an order confirming the arbitral award and thereafter issue a writ of execution. However, in the execution of, uh, <coughs> of the decision and the arbitral award, uh, we found that uh, there is uh, some danger of prejudice to the rights of third parties which is why we asked the court to resolve that issue. Since that issue was not resolved, that, that prompted us to bring the matter up to the Court of Appeals through the petition. It is, it is the Court of Appeals in that petition that issued the temporary restraining order. Uh, so, does that mean that we don't have to wait for the ruling of RTC6? Because it's been elevated to the CA? 
meaning the ruling in the on the the motion. RTC. Uh, our interpretation is that uh, our motion had been denied um, since uh, it had not been uh, at least there was no action on the part of the RTC in relation to that motion, uh, which uh, asked for clarification that the rights of the third parties must be respected as well as what I mentioned a while ago, which is the reciprocal obligation performed simultaneously between BCDA and uh, CJH. Those are the issues that were raised. Now, I will not go into the details as to why no, or on the merits. Those are the issues that we raised. We uh, took it as a denial of our motion in as much as the motion had not been acted upon, which prompted us to bring it up to the Court of Appeals. Um, sure. Another question. Um, this, this might sound like a but as, as I understand it, the the situation of the third parties must have been raised in the arbitration. In the arbitration, the tribunal did not comment on it. Never it, raised. Was it raised at all no. in the arbitration mm -hmm. proceedings? As I have mentioned, the third parties, the locators, are not parties to the arbitration. No, the arbitration is strictly mm -hmm. as between BCDA and uh, CJH. That is not even an issue in the arbitration. Not okay. raised. Yes, so it, was that, uh, it, it, it was never raised in the arbitration? No. It's not part of the arbitration. So, uh, can we assume that uh, since it was not an issue at all, that uh, this is to be considered as a separate case? And it has to be, it has to be, uh, yes, to be resolved in another court case, in another case. Uh, you mean if there was to be a final resolution in relation to the third party rights? Yes. That cannot be resolved in a case where you are not even party. That is basic due process. Yes. Yeah, I, just to expound a little bit on that. They were never a party in the arbitration because it was just between DEVCO, CJ DEVCO, and BCDA exclusively. There was no mention of any third party whatsoever. No race at all. Race, discussed, thought about, <laughs> nothing, no, completely nothing. They were not, there were nothing there. Now, the decision came out, 1.4 billion, as we know, and okay. That was confirmed by the court, the RTC court, uh, in total. The whole arbitral decision was uh, confirmed by the RTC court of Baguio. Now, the RTC court of Baguio did mention about the third parties. And what the, art, arbit, uh, what the court of Baguio said is that they will be governed by the laws and obligations and contracts. That the third parties will be governed by the law on contracts and obligations. That means, ibang kaso yun. Iba yun. That's another matter altogether, right? At least that's our interpretation. And if you listen to those words, it is governed by the law on contracts and obligations. And if you look at that, that's 1385, which basically has to do with buyers of good faith. So it's quite clear that the third parties are completely out and neither are the third parties in the uh, writ of execution of Judge Archog. The third parties were never mentioned in the writ of execution of the court order which confirmed the arbitral decision. That's why it was shocking <laughs> that in the uh, writ of the sheriff, biglang nagkaroon ng third party doon. Because nowhere in any court order, writ of execution or arbitral decision, was the third parties ever discussed, much less asked to it to uh, get out. No? So that's that's where we are now, and that's the reason we filed uh, this case, and that's the reason we went up to the CA, and that's the reason we have the TRO. It's really to protect our third party investor, locators, residents, no? and uh, members of the Camp Janio community. Sir, last question. Sir, you, you mentioned that uh, what you raised uh, for the appeal was to mention the determination of payment of BCDA at one point. Uh, now with the TRO, is there also an assumption that, uh, that the payment can be withheld until, well, until the CA or whatever? Because the deadline of BCDA uh, technically is also today by midnight to give you for you to be paid in a manner that's satisfactory yeah. to you. So, I don't know if you status now. 
there is nothing to preclude parties from voluntarily executing a decision. But the problem is in this case, no, in this case, uh, we do not see it happening insofar as the simultaneous payment of the 1.4 billion uh, claim or obligation is concerned, happening simultaneously with the, uh, with the, uh, at least the, uh, the, the act of CGH Devco vacating uh, uh, Camp John A. So if your question is, can the parties freely perform it? Yes, they can. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding uh, a court case. No? But uh, in this case, no? the, the third parties have already, uh, that is only one component of the execution, you must remember. There's a second component of the, uh, of the execution, which is the respect, as I mentioned, of the third party rights, who in the meantime had also received notices from the sheriff. No, sir, my, my question is, uh, since yeah. The, uh, the, 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 no, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, there is this supersedes, in fact. So because of the TRO, the TRO basically says that the notice to vacate is is now suspended. It is suspended for sixty days. Okay, and in that sixty days, there will be a hearing in the Court of Appeals to make this determination, to make this decision and to give due process, right? So, uh, in short, uh, the, the notice to vacate is suspended by means of this TRO. And so will the payment be suspended? You know the payment, let's talk about the payment. Uh, there have been statements from DCDA that were paid, were, were complied with, and now DEPCO has to vacate. Wrong. That is completely wrong. That is a ruse, that is a misrepresentation. Because the account they opened, which they call an escrow account. Technically, an escrow account, you transfer the money from a BCD account, it goes into a bank account called an escrow account. You give an instruction to the escrow agent, namely the bank, on the conditions of the release of funds. Okay? And whoever opened the escrow account gives full authority to the bank to release that money. That is a real escrow account, number one. That is not what they opened. What they opened is an account, a BCDA account, in fact. <laughs> it's still their account, okay? Uh, and uh, the beneficiary of the account is not CJ Devco. It is RTC of Baguio. So uh, the question is, if you want to draw on that account, if Dev how will Devco draw on that account? No way. First of all, it needs the consent of DCDA. Secondly, how can we even request to, to draw it when in fact the payee is the city of Baguio, I mean RTC of Baguio. So definitely that so-called escrow account, quote unquote, that they mentioned is not in compliance with the court order or how the court envisioned the payment to be. How did the court envision the payment to be? Very simple. And if you take a look at the transcripts of uh, the proceedings in court, uh, Judge Archog herself stated, Kaliwaan, in her own words, quote unquote, Kaliwaan, uh, that the sheriff will have the check, a, a check or cash, uh, for 1.4 billion, although we will accept cash. Uh, and, uh, and once that check is in the hands of the sheriff, then we will talk about how to vacate. Okay, and that will happen simultaneously. Okay, the check is in my hands, please vacate, kaliwaan. So that is how the court order envisioned it. And that can be found in the transcripts of the court. And uh, so now that scenario is so far removed from what BCDA claims it has complied with. Does the sheriff have the check in her hands? No. Does the court of Baguio even have it in its account? No. Has BCDA given up that money for this purpose? No, because it still requires their consent and signature to release it. So they've really done nothing but to open up a special account. That's all, in their name. We can't get to it. And so because of the nature of the financial instrument they opened up, we will not vacate. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes, yes, that, that, that has to go to the board. Oh. Yeah, but we already are looking at projects here. What sort of projects? Uh, retail and hotel. Okay. Retail, hotel, residential. Those are the three areas. And how many of the 500 can you also serve if you do that? Well, you see, the 500 is a big number because it includes so many of parts of Jambi and third party areas. Now, let me explain that a bit. <coughs> For instance, the golf club will continue under present management. A lot of them, all of them in the golf club, that will continue, business as usual. The golf club ne never got its authority or its right or its rights from Camp John Hay Depot. The golf club got their rights directly from BCDA because BCDA at the very beginning of this project mandated that there should be a golf club and that membership shares should be sold, okay? And that the golf club was in fact incorporated, is an SEC registered corporation okay, operating under SEC laws and compliant with SEC laws. And therefore it's a separate entity that was put up. DEPCO does not own the golf club. We don't. It's a, it's a company that was registered under the SEC put up to comply with the condition of BCDA that you have to put up a golf course and a golf club in Camp John Hay. And the golf club did. And of course, sold shares to the public, membership shares, as directed and mandated by BCDA itself under the original lease agreement. So you know, that, uh, that will continue. <coughs> and some of our other facilities, like the hotels, are similarly situated because this is all under the master development plan of BCDA. All of these structures, all of its uses, okay, were not only authorized, but were, was actually mandated, was imposed, was a condition that this be done in Camp John Hay. So this is all in compliance with BCDA. So where did you get the authority? BCDA. Yes, uh, but what, a, but what, okay, uh, let's talk about, because it was mandated by BCDA, it does not mean that BCDA owns it. That's two different things. The members of Camp John Hay Golf Club owns the golf club until 2046. The hotels and the various condo hotel unit owners in the hotel owns the rights to use those rooms as they see fit until 2046. It's a corporation. It's a corporation. So uh, it's a corporation, and the corporation serves its uh, members, which are the third party locators. And so these third party locators have given the management to the current management of the hotel, just as the golf club members have given its management of its affairs to its board of governors, whom they elected in its annual elections. So if BCD wants to get into the board of the golf club, then let them run in the elections and let them be voted upon by the members. Yeah. You're, you're next, you're in a, in a project. You're already in Baguio or are you in Greece? They're in Baguio. Yeah, they're in Baguio. These are properties of yours? Or These are properties uh, that have been offered to us to develop under joint ventures. Super. Okay, thank you too. Tiham, Fernandez, and Paredes. Is this name you know the first name, sir? Justices uh, Noel G. Tiham, Justice Mayra D. Garcia Fernandez, 
and uh, Justice uh, Victoria Isabel Paredes. Anyway, these are matters of public record yeah. because you can look it up on the website who comp comprises the fifth yeah. division. Sorry. It's relatively short, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Very short. Uh, okay. Let's go to the limitations and corporations. Does he have a question? So Maybe the question your basis on the coverage. Okay. coverage and the limitations of the PRO, considering that you cannot yet distribute the same. Uh, at least, uh, at least, uh, uh, to the court, the at least PRO before the court receives its own, uh, its own copy. Yeah. Uh, in general, uh, or at least in gist, uh, what the, uh, that, uh, the temporary restraining order enjoins or, or prohibits for the time being is the uh, enforcement of the writ of execution as well as the notices to vacate issued by the RTC branch 6 as well as the sheriffs of that branch. So uh, the entire, uh, the, the, uh, basically the enforcement, no? the enforcement of the, uh, of the artificial award is held in abeyance for the time being at least for the next 60 days and then the, the, the Court of Appeals will uh, conduct hearings uh, to resolve the two issues that we have raised before it, the two essential issues at the very least. Mainly, as we had mentioned, the inclusion in the execution of the third parties as well as uh, the reciprocal nature of uh, what must take place during the course of the uh, execution, meaning the simultaneous delivery of the 1.4 billion uh, together with the... Uh, the act of uh, CGH Depot vacating uh, Camp John Day. Those are temporarily, those are suspended for the time being. Yes, for the time being, yes. Did it bar the RTC from uh, hearing uh, pending motions? Well, there is no pending motion, uh, at least not at our instance for the time being that we, we know no, of. We, I think you know the pending motion over uh, Attorney Gilbert Reyes I believe that is the motion, uh, the omnibus motion, yes. yes. But it is precisely that omnibus motion that we brought up to the Court of Appeals here. Uh, so as I mentioned a while ago, uh, the absence of the yes, since we did not receive a ruling on the omnibus motion, and in light of the very, very grave urgency of the matter, because we are talking about uh, a deadline imposed by the sheriff of 30 days, which could expire by the 21st. If we do not receive uh, a resolution uh, on that issue by then, and then uh, there will be enforcement on the part of the sheriff and uh, the, the, the consequences could be unimaginable. That is, that is what prompted us to, to bring the matter up to the Court of Appeals. So how about the, uh, there are third parties uh, represented by some lawyers who also uh, filed uh, motions uh, before the court for this Well, I do not think I am in a position to speak for their, uh, the, the councils for those, uh, no, no, uh, those parties. No. In your uh, own uh, judgment, no. is this covered by the PRO? Are these covered by the PRO? I'm sorry, what are covered by the PRO? The, the, the motions of uh, third parties. Motions of the third parties? Yeah, uh, because uh, some of them are, uh, yeah, several of them have uh, filed uh, well, those matters are not covered by the petition that we filed with the Court of Appeals no? because we cannot file a petition in relation to a motion filed by someone else. No? I will withhold my, uh, my, my opinion on the matter because uh, I have to respect the RTC branch 6 on that. No? If it is covered by, uh, by our, uh, our, at least by the the TRO also, as to whether the court will proceed to hear that. No? Uh, but insofar as we are concerned, no, the enforcement of the decision of the arbitral award must be stayed for the time being. Okay. Okay, so, uh, you know, I think a simpler way of probably putting it this way. No? The third parties who have filed various, but I mean, you know, I mean uh, third party claims, <laughs> Uh, quieting of titles. I mean, uh, there's so many cases being filed left and right by our residents yes, <coughs> and investors that um, each of them will be subject to their own due process. Kanya -kanya yan, you know? As a matter of fact, all, practically a, a lot of them also asked for a TRO. You know, 
fighting and title and injunctive relief. So, um, but as far as we're concerned, the omnibus uh, petition that we filed covers all of the third parties as well, in that they are also likewise covered by the TRO that the notice to vacate that was given to them is also suspended. So as far as these same third parties who filed claims in court, they are also under the TRO by in, in, in the sense that the eviction notice that they got, the notice to vacate that they got, is also suspended. So naka-TRO din yun. So they're the beneficiary of that too. Everybody in Camp Jan. So just to clarify, no? so they benefit. No? They benefit essentially from the issuance of the TRO. But insofar as their individual motions yeah. and other yeah. uh, pleadings that have been filed, no? that will still be up to the IPC. Uh, sir, um, uh, in the previous press conferences, uh, you said you would provide lawyer for the third parties. Uh, uh, were these uh, motions uh, sanctioned by the lawyers that you have provided? Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, some of the lawyers that uh, have filed uh, claims, uh, well, the bill, let's just put it this way, the bills go to us. <laughs> some of them brought their own lawyers, billing forward to uh, Camp John A. Debco. And we, we are paying for it. Well, consolidation is, is, uh, is a fairly legal term. Uh, what we filed uh, with the Court of Appeals is a special civil action under Rule 65. It cannot be consolidated with ordinary civil actions that may be filed later on, okay. later on, by uh, the uh, individual unit owners or other locators. No? As to any other remedy that can be pursued later on, we have to study that. Uh, we have to study that uh, uh, before we, we actually pursue any such consolidated action, if that is even the decision. Prior to legal matters and that if the 30 day rule uh, given by the court is filed, there's another uh, 15 day and another 7 day rule to speak of. Uh, why is the sheriff too uh, eager to uh, enforce the, uh, the eviction tomorrow? Uh, maybe, maybe we are based on that uh, 15 day rule and Sorry, I'm not familiar with the, the, the 15 and 7 yeah, day rule. Uh, yeah. Because the, the sheriff could give you another uh, 15 day, mm -hmm. and after the expiration of the 15 day, <coughs> another 7 day to somewhat uh, comply with whatever. Anyway, uh, we, we cannot speak for the sheriff. We cannot speak for the sheriff insofar as uh, her supposed eagerness to enforce the decision is concerned. What, the, what uh, matters to us for the time being is that in the notice to vacate uh, served upon us, we were given 30 days. That Those 30 days are about to expire without any resolution of our omnibus motion filed with the RTC. And it constrained us to go up to the Court of Appeals to request for injunctive relief, in this case, the, the TRO. No? I think Attorney Desus knows that something. Now you don't matter, um, what we understand that uh, given given the urgent nature and the interests involved in this case and the potential consequences, things like several rights that may be prejudiced, all of these things that, that can arise by the eagerness of the sheriff to enforce the writ of execution, we cannot assume that the sheriff will give us this so-called leniency hearing. We just have to be diligent and try and defend all our rights and interests as Kanchan A Development Corporation, and also, incidentally, the rights of these third parties in our petition. We cannot assume that leniency will be given to Kanchan A. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, Justice. Thank you. Of course, thanks to uh, Mr. Dominic Guzman of APS CBN. Good morning, sirs. Sir, uh, last year, one security guard allegedly committed suicide inside the camp. Can you confirm that that 
uh, sentence to give it to God to read it to the side because of um, the problem arising from the kid of five of uh, Jan a uh, serious life problem recently. Yep, I really am not in a position to know that. No? I mean, so many people commit suicide for various reasons, uh, and I believe uh, most of them are personal. Um, very rarely is it job related, no? but um, but I really wouldn't know his particular reason for doing that. Sir, we will confirm the information that uh, you purchased the uh, proper location of Pyro uh, Program as the venue for your future project. Uh, no, we, we haven't purchased any property in Byron City. Negotiations no. are uh, we're talking to a lot of property owners, but we have not purchased any. But one is the former location of the... One of them is, yeah. One of them is Hyatt. There's a number of uh, nice properties in Baguio City. Yes, sir. sir, can you show us the copy of uh, the PIA? Yeah, it's in right here. For the photo op? Yeah, photo Yeah, okay. yeah I'll come on. Uh, I made that request because uh, allegedly the uh, Secretary of uh, Justice in Hamlet told one of our resources in CA that Justice in Hamlet is not taking any action on the petition. Signed, original. We have no reason to doubt at least the copy that was given to us. So you don't accept? Yes, sir. Uh, everything was already promulgated in the Court of Appeals, was already brought to the mail room, and uh, our lawyers picked it up from the CA, all duly signed. The original will be the, with the court already, as of, as of uh, today, within the day. Um, Attorney uh, Darino, Attorney Sikula, you have a role in the court, as you us, no? especially when you cover the Supreme Court hearings. Um, you cannot... Uh, an announcement, especially you, uh, you don't believe in their position. What's up? You have to respect the RTC. I'm sure you don't know that you have a copy. That's the time you have to respect it. Right? Are we not, are we, us, the media, we might be accused by the court of not being a lot of copy. Not a lot of copy. That is not a lot of copy. That is the reason why, if you will notice, uh, when you ever ask me questions, whenever you ask me questions, or any person in the media, on matters involving the TRO, I confine myself to what is the ruling of the court. What is the ruling of the court? Uh, we make no effort to argue on the merits of our position before the media, <coughs> out of respect to what is called the, uh, the, the rule on sub judice. Uh, insofar as we are concerned, we have received, or we have confirmed received this afternoon, I'm sorry, this uh, earlier this morning, of a temporary restraining order with the Court of Appeals. The official copy is already being brought as we speak by the deputized sheriff of the Court of Appeals for service to the uh, uh, the RTC branch seats of Baguio as well as the uh, uh, the sheriff of uh, Baguio. As regards the reasons uh, whether the correctness or, or wrongness or uh, whether we agree or not with uh, the contents of uh, the decision or any other ruling or decision uh, made by the court, no? we withhold, uh, at least as a matter of prudence, uh, commenting on that because we do not want to bring the argument on the merits before the, uh, the media. Right. So we have confined ourselves to what is official and what is before us. In your position, uh, talking about sub in the position of media, might we not also be uh, being advanced? Because we have court. That is why as that is why, as a matter of prudence, we want to withhold the copy of the decision until the RTC branch six gets its own copy. I mean to say we cannot still uh, broadcast the rights of government if we do not have that copy, right? In that position, decision maker. Right about what? Sorry. Uh, no, if you write about the PR, the PR or the matter of the uh, of the PR. Well, we are. Of us as well, we are at least. This is my opinion as counsel. My opinion is that it, if it is a matter of public record already. If it is an official act of, uh, of, uh, of the government or of the judiciary, then it is a matter that can be reported that is uh, still covered by the freedom of the press as well as your own freedom of expression. 
the rule on sub judice, what it prohibits, or at least what it prevents, is uh, bringing matters of argument, matters of argument on the merits of each decision uh, before the media with the end in view to influence the judiciary later on. So we have limited ourselves to what is uh, official and what is before us. You know? And uh, well, we, we are of the opinion that these are matters that can be reported. I just want to make things simple. We can tell you what happened. And what happened is the issuance of three TRO by the Fifth Division of the Court of Appeals. What we cannot tell you is the basis for the issuance of the TRO. We cannot come to the press and argue before you what cases were cited, what arguments were raised, what contentions and what interpretations we think are correct, and what interpretations of the other side we think are flawed. But at the very least, we can tell you that a TRO has been issued, and we intend to comply with the TRO, and we do hope that the other parties also comply. Thank you. Uh, Mark Good afternoon, sirs. Uh, I'm just curious uh, about the manner that it's supposed to be the City Mayor Bambio was invited to this document. Uh, any ideas, sir, uh, about the uh, main example of the violence? We, you know, uh, the, the Mayor Demogan knows about this, but I don't think we ever invited him to join us. I don't know if uh, the media invited him, but CJ Devko didn't really invite him because, uh, you know, as far as this is concerned and this matter is concerned, it's really between CJ Devko and BCDA. And our announcement was just to say we have a, the, the TRO. The TRO is with us and that uh, the official copy will be given to uh, the sheriff or the uh, ex-official uh, sheriff in uh, the baggy courts within the day. This is really the only announcement we came here. And it, more than anything, it's to put at ease all of our third-party locators and residents, uh, not to worry that there is such a document that is now being officially received by the sheriff. That's all right. Thank you, Mark. Um, Ms. Rika Espirito, Mayor, <coughs> followed by uh, Mr. Dick DePrado. This is just a clarification. Um, I mean, like, what I understand, there should be no public turnover of matters for matter, the matter, and the court was right, because the matter is under leadership. So, technically, you guys won't be taken out by the CDA. Uh, yes, uh, again, the management of the Camp John Hay Manor Hotel and the Forest Lodge Hotel is under a management contract with Club Leisure. And of course, the group, the parties that actually own the units here, the third party owners, are actually the ones who contracted the management. So uh, it's not DEVCO, it's actually the unit owners. So the management is actually working for the unit owners, not DEVCO. So you mentioned earlier that your total investment is around five billion. Yes. And and why are you accepting like a one point four billion thing with that? Is it like a losing business proposition? Well, first of all, uh, you have to uh, realize. There's a total of five billion that went to create all of the structures you have around you. Now, as far as we're concerned, there are also years that the, the company made profits, made dividends, especially in the early years, and certainly not in the last 10 years. No. <laughs> but uh, the point being, there is a court order to settle at 1.4 billion. Okay? There is a court order to vacate. We, as DEVCO, went to the arbitral uh, committee and put our fate in their hands. So it's no longer a question of do we like it or not, do we agree with it or not, or not even what we think about it. It's a question of following the rule of law, right? We all agreed to go to the arbitration, both BCDA and us. We agreed to abide by their decision, and that's all we're doing, abiding by it, whether we like it or not. I just hope BCDA does the same thing.
feel that's around 3.5 billion plus. Well, like I said, nobody gets exactly what they want, right? Um, BCDA wanted to collect 3 billion from us, right? They didn't get the 3 billion. We didn't get our 5 billion back. We're getting our 1.4 billion. Plus, of course, whatever earned during the 18 years as a compensation for debt or for interest, okay, uh, collected from third parties. That was the arbitral decision. So with that, we will comply. If we lost money, so be it. But it's time to move on. Thank you. Okay, so meron pa ba sa mga media? Mga pahapal na tanong? Okay na. Ah, sige. Ah, mabali. Actually, sorry, sorry. It is dated May 19, 2015, but we received, at least, or at least we were able to see a copy today. And then it's the same. Uh, this morning. Just this morning, yes. But did you have a. Uh, you saw the copy this morning, but did you know about the decision earlier? Just this morning? Just this morning. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, actually, this press con, uh, what we were going to talk about, uh, was not the TRO. We were going to talk about basically our position of fighting for the third party rights along the lines of what I spoke about earlier. You know, and that uh, the spirit of the court order was to simultaneous payment and to vacate. This is what we wanted to clarify with the press. Uh, and pleasant surprises we got the TRO this morning. Bonus na lang to. So the TR, the TR, uh, TR actually indicated the question I wanted to ask. I was waiting for the first question. Um, this is just a question to me. There was no TRO, which was something I expected this morning. And the sheriff said, from with the principal, how will it end? How will it no, uh, exactly. Uh, our position has been, is, and will continue to be that the court decision, the arbitral decision, the court decision, the writ of execution, all of these court orders you know, basically envision the reciprocal nature of payment and vacate. All of these court orders, all of them, never envisioned a situation where third parties would be involved and much less dispossessed of their homes and uh, investments. None of them ever mentioned that. As a matter of fact, the court order in fact mentioned that they would be subject to another law, which means another hearing, if any. And so that is our position. And that our position was that the 30 days is an imposition by the sheriff and the sheriff only. It is not in the court order. There is no arbitral decision on it. But as far as the court order is concerned, you pay and we vacate. Kaliwaan, as the judge herself said in the court. And she is quoted in the transcripts as saying that. Kaliwaan. So that is what we are willing to abide by. And anything else to our mind, okay, goes against or is not found in any court order or arbitral decision. And as such, of course, we will defend our rights. And the, the third parties. Okay, may pahabal pa si Sir James. Pag-qualify ko lang po yun, just to... Of course, it's unlikely, but if it happens tomorrow, what happens if, if, if what if, if tomorrow if that happens tomorrow they give you the money and they leave what happens to the third party do you need a request for them mm. so all that comes right? well again that matter of the third party is also in the court of appeals now 
But it is, it is our petition that the Court of Appeals render a decision on the third parties. It is now in our petition. So we are awaiting a decision from the Court of Appeals to render a decision on that. Okay. Remember, there are now two. Vince, there used to be one only. Okay. That is simple lang yung said CJ Depo. Pay us and we bakit. Because of all of these notices to bakit and all of this harassment our homeowners, locators have been receiving, sinama na namin sila doon sa omnibus petition. Not only is it 1.4, but rule on the third party's rights as well. Dalawa na ngayon. Well, I'm not a lawyer, huh? but the way I read this, there is a TRO. So okay. Tomorrow, yeah, no, the, that what what my reading of the TRO, and I really don't want to go into details, no, but very general lang. Dalawa lang naman, isa lang naman yung sinabi ng TRO. Suspended, yung, yung uh, notice to vacate is suspended on everyone, on everyone, until the CA makes a determination on the matters before the court, which includes the, 30, which includes the third parties and the Kaliwa issue. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, just to add lang on the concern of our residents, for the last 30 days, with much anxiety and insecurity, and they've been tormented with, with so much of harassment and signing some documents and stuff, and they have, slept, they have sleepless nights. I have spoken to many of them, and I sympathize with what the situation is, but as I've always said, CJ Tepco is going to fight for all the residents. We are not going to abandon, and we are happy that uh, this uh, surprise today of uh, Restraining order came in. So for the next 60 days, uh, we're okay. Everybody's all right. And uh, our commitment to support all the all our residents remains intact. Thank you. Okay. So before we formally end the press fund, uh, we would like to acknowledge, of course, the head of Income Johnny Gold Club, Mr. Jim Allen. Okay. Uh, I will, uh, Yes, um, uh, just that we would like to see an end to this. Uh, we just need the BCDA to be reasonable, to uh, honor the rights of third party investors, locators, residents in Camp John Hay. And last but not least, uh, pay up the 1.4. And if they do that, we don't need any court, we don't need any sheriff, it's been our position ever since. Between the two of us, we can resolve all of this. And it remains to be our position up to now. Thank you. Oh, this is an advanced copy.